and I got together on this. Uh, it's, it was just a, a, a story of happenstance. Um, I had made uh, an L4-134 Jeep engine, which is the Flathead Willys, and I did a limited production on that, and um, it went fine. I got a call one day from a guy named Leonard Nettles in Los Angeles, and he said, look, you've made this Jeep engine, do you think you could make a Model A engine? We talked about it, and I said, I think so. It sounds fairly straightforward. So uh, I was out on the West Coast. I went out and met Terry, and we shook hands and got started on this about three years ago. And so this is where we are today. We just have brought in, uh, we've been shipping them into the U.S. for about a year now. But we've been behind on production, and we finally are getting to the point where we have a steady flow. But let me get into this. I, I have to, I don't want to start off with an apology, but the real guy who can give you the excellent presentation on all the aspects of the uh, engine and the way it's designed is Terry. And he, um, he's given some presentations, uh, an hour and 40 minute presentation down at the Mofka meet. It's, and we have it on video and it is thorough. This is um, a slideshow presentation. It's about a third of that, but I'm gonna go through this and maybe it'll raise enough, you know, uh, curiosity, I can answer a few questions about it. I myself am not a Model A guy, okay? I don't have one. Uh, I understand a little bit about engines, um, but manufacturing is my thing, but I've learned a little bit along the way, especially working with Terry. He's been, uh, he's been a great mentor in, the, in engineering and manufacturing for me. But anyway, let me uh, just start off with, um, I think what we, uh, attempted to achieve here uh, with the block, and that is that from the outside, uh, the block looks identical to the original. And you cannot tell, in fact, uh, I think Terry had a fine point judge look at it and indicated that he wouldn't be able to tell if it were assembled in, in a vehicle. Um, so that was our main objective. We had, um, the exterior had to be perfect the interior is modern uh, when it comes to the lower end, the crankshaft, the connecting rods, uh, the five main bearings. Uh, it has a pressurized oil system. It has 16 internal uh, pressurized, uh, let's say, outlets when you, when you consider the main bearings, the connecting rod bearings. Uh, and then when you add in, we have a, a, a pressure uh, um, outlet at the end of the cam, so the end of the camshaft is actually lubricated. Um, and um, so the, um, the fly, or the, the, uh, the crankshaft is 60, 62 pounds. It's, uh, it has eight counterweights on it, and uh, it's fully balanced, harmonically balanced to within, I think it's uh, a half ounce per inch. If, any engineers in here know what that means. Are there any engineers in here? That'll make my job a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the main journals um, and the, the uh, connecting rod bearings, they're all stock off the shelf bearings. They're small block GM bearings, they're two inch. And they've been used in productions from I think 1953 to about 2004. So. They'll never go away. You'll always be able to get bearings for this block. Uh, the cam bearings are unique, but we'll always have them as well. There are um, five main, five cam bearings in the block. And um, so the final thing, I, I, I should probably just say that when you think about this engine, everything, the interfaces, everything is stock except the crankshaft and the connecting rods the bearings, obviously, and the rear main seal. Everything else uses a stock Model A part. And that would be- Including the cam? You can use a stock cam, sure. This is a five bearing cam, yeah. but a stock cam will work fine. So. What's the front seal? Is it the rope seal or is that a- Well, I think there are, there are nitrile seals on the market, I believe. Um, Terry actually makes those, and I think he supplies them to Snyder's. But, uh, but the stock configuration is sealed. 
That's right. It's and not modern. It's not a modern. The front end is not modern. The crankshaft, uh, all of the mating surfaces except the journals are taken from the original four drawings. So everything that fits on an original crankshaft will fit on this crankshaft, of course, except the, the rods. Okay. So I don't know if you have gone to the website. Uh, there are two. Terry has one, modelaengine.com, and he has a lot of information about the genesis of the project, you know, the years that he's worked on it, um, you know, the ups and the downs, and he has information on that about uh, builder, the builder's guide, which is, I think, 50 pages. And it's, uh, it's really, if any of you are considering getting one, it's really worth reading. Uh, a lot of good advice in there, you know, how to approach it. Um, but um, the, uh, the other website is our e-commerce site. And on that site, you will see some information about the, uh, the original block that we built for our prototype and how we tested it. And there's a video of us driving it up uh, um, a 2,000 foot uh, mountain in Colorado. Did you yeah. see it? Okay. Yeah, that's online. Yeah, okay. Um, I, yeah, you're right. I've seen it online. You don't have to go to the website. I think you can just Google it. But um, anyway, that's. Um, so what we've got here, the other uh, member of our team is Bill Percival. And Bill lives in Florida. You may have noticed uh, that we have an office there. And uh, Bill handles, he's our CFO, uh, manages the books and so forth. So the team is Terry, myself, and Bill. And I'm sort of the go-to person when it comes to uh, where's my block, or how do I order this, or can you ship it here, or when are they coming in? Uh, Bill is the go-to person when the invoice is wrong, you know, or, and Terry obviously is the go-to when there's a real technical question. Uh, and I, I can field some of them, but certainly not all of them. Yeah, I have one question. Sure. Do you have many warranty returns out of the 500 so far? We've had, uh, we had one return. Uh, and it was because the block, and it's, there's nothing wrong with the block, except it's got a cosmetic flaw here. Yeah. And it's, uh, apparently there was a, a bump and they ground it off and it left a grind mark. So mm -hmm. the customer got it, he didn't like it, so we just, just yeah. changed it, we still have that. But, um, that one reduces the market price. <laughs> <laughs> it That's might be. It might yeah. be. It may be. We actually, in our first production run, we did have some casting flaws. Um, one of the guys in the West Coast ground. There were small bumps uh, on the uh, the side of the block. He ground them down, and he used uh, uh, a scaler, a uh, needle scaler, to retexture the surface. It, you can't tell. So there are ways to deal with it. Anyway, I'm going to send him probably that block unless you're interested. But, <laughs> but no, we haven't had any. Uh, we haven't had any defects, and we haven't had any failures. Yeah. Knock on wood. So, yeah. um, but anyway, let me move on here. Um, so the engineering evaluation engine that we built out at Burks in uh, September, I guess it was, of 2020. Um, we ran it for hours and hours and hours. And just for example, one of our runs, 3,100 RPMs, uh, RPM for six hours, nonstop, fine. Um, we ran it at uh, 2,000 RPM for five hours. We got a, a temperature, a high temperature at the rear of the head, but it turns out uh, we didn't advance the timing on it. So Terry said that this is probably, this, is, this would be a result of that. Since then, of course, it's, uh, our temperature has not been any kind of an issue. Uh, we ran it up the mountain climb, which is a five mile grade, a uh, five mile climb at six and a half percent grade, and um, ran great. Uh, we, if you, if you look at some of the data, just as a side note, 
and it's, I think it's a good reference. We were only able to get four PSI of oil pressure out of our original block, and we didn't understand why. When we sent the block back to California and Terry broke it down and examined it, first thing he noticed was everything was fine. There was no excessive wear, uh, no problems anywhere. We had left one of the plugs out of the bottom of the block, which feeds straight into the oil galley. So it was blasting oil, high pressure oil, right out the bottom. And um, anyway, at four PSI, uh, it still ran cool. It uh, had no uh, issues with friction and it was fine. So if you put all the plugs in, I think you'll be in good shape, actually. <laughs> what pressure uh, does it run at? Well, so, you know, um, we have, we didn't know when we built this what the oil pump solution was going to be. And a number of guys installed Stipe pumps, which you may be familiar with. Uh, they're high pressure, high volume pumps. Um, we found out through testing, and now they're being manufactured, a stock Model A pump it provides plenty of oil pressure, plenty of volume. And the only thing you have to do to it is uh, put a pressure relief valve on it somewhere in the oil system uh, because it'll build up more than, I don't know how high it'll go, but it'll exceed 40 PSI. So there's some guys, uh, Terry's building, he's made a uh, pressure relief valve that can fit on the side of the stock Model A pump. All you have to do is tap in a 1 8 inch NP, NTP uh, plug and you can screw it right in and then you can adjust your pressure from 25 up to 35. So um, Leonard Metals, and I can give you his contact information later, but he's building brand new pumps with a built-in pressure relief valve. And that's currently available. And it just was available recently. Uh, but those are the solutions. And if you, uh, if you have a stock Model A pump and you don't want to put the money into a new one, just get the pressure relief valve and you'll be fine. And Terry is the go-to guy for that. Um, so. I've, I've gone through some, just uh, speaking extemporaneously, I've gone through some of the, uh, the main features of the engine, obviously it's five main bearings. The bearings are all two inch diameter. Uh, the pressure lubrication system. Um, I could show you on the, on the uh, PowerPoint, but there's really no need. Um, talking about the intake ports on this, um, Terry redesigned the ports so that when they enter the block, they enter at a 45 degree angle and then 90. Uh, a stock Model A block, it enters at uh, 90 in and 90 up. And so this provides you a little bit better aspiration. Uh, people are reporting that they feel that it gives them, um, it runs better at higher RPMs and it seems to be able to take hills better. Uh, I'll leave it up to you if any of you guys end up getting an engine. We haven't, we don't have any definitive testing on that, but it seems to be a, a sense that it's, uh, the aspiration is better on this engine. Um, the intake ports, and I'm reading here because I'm not a Model A expert or a Model B expert, but uh, the intake ports are, it says larger Model B type intake ports. Um, the main webs that support the bearings are thicker than the stock block, and the water jacket areas where they have been prone to cracking have been thickened. So this has all been in the design. And uh, Terry understands how the blocks have failed in the past, and he's taken steps to strengthen them in their areas of weakness. Um, and uh, all, all the main caps, they all have 12-point uh, 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 nuts on them. The caps are all located with dowel pins. So their the location is fixed. Are those self-locking nuts? The top. Not self-locking. What keeps them tight? I presume the torque. 55 PSI, 55 foot-pounds of torque. 
maybe they are self-locking. I'm not the guy. Terry would have a, a, a quick answer for you on that, but we haven't had any loosen up yet that we know of. <laughs> anyway, so um, the way we achieve the the appearance of the block itself, and maybe I mentioned a little bit earlier, is we took an original block and we laser scanned it. And uh, that was transferred into a, a CAD engineering program and it was drawn up. And from that, we went to our tooling models. Uh, and that's why we were able to make it look identical. So the, um, and that's, that's quite a process. Uh, after they scan it, it actually has to go into a software where they, where the uh, CAD operator then will draw in over the scan data and match it and match it up as closely as humanly possible. But our, uh, we were able to determine that um, the actual uh, surface of the casting is probably within less than, the, probably the widest deviation is less than uh, a tenth of a millimeter. Uh, and it, it follows the contours of the original design quite uh, nearly perfectly. And I would, have got, I would imagine that even the blocks that were made at the Ford factory that Henry Ford made, you know, there was probably a fair amount of deviation depending upon the forms that were made anyway. So. And let's see, these are the things you would have seen if we had a screen, but I can talk through it here. Um, I, I have some, and I can leave this with you. I, there's some nice pictures in here of the factory manufacturing the blocks. And I know you can't see it by me holding it up, but there's a few pages of that. And you can see them uh, sort of lined up in machining operations um, and then there is one picture here where they show a block on a CMM, which is a coordinate measuring machine. And this is one of the, um, uh, during the production, they take random samples every day, and then they do, they put it on their CMM. It's a, it's a machine that has a robotic arm, and it touches the surface of the block, the machine surfaces, to check your accuracy of the cuts. And the precision of the CMM is something on the order of one fifty-two thousandths of an inch. So it's extraordinarily precise. Um, but anyway, I'll leave this and you can take a look. <clears throat> you have that in a PDF? Could post I do, site. I do, I do. I can also give you the PowerPoint if you like. And you can go to email it. So. Yeah. E email it to Jeff. Okay. Who, who should I send it to? Okay. I'll get you my Just email. give me your contact uh, details. Okay. Um, so the crankshaft weighs 62 pounds. Uh, it's, it has uh, eight counterweights on it, and it's uh, the all the journals are two inch. It's made of um, modern nodular iron. The materials in this block are modern materials and they're, um, <coughs> the materials used in the original blocks were not as good as what we're using now. Uh, I think when, you know, we've gotten the hardness check on the block, it seems to exceed what uh, the current blocks or the original blocks are made from. Uh, the crankshaft, of course, there's, this is a nodular iron is a more flexible type of cast iron, but as you can see, it's, it's quite heavy. Uh, I don't think there's any risk of anything happening to it. Um, it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's balanced to within a half ounce per inch. And that's, that's as I understand it, pretty good. So, um, and all the seal, the rubber, the, the surfaces, the rear, actually the rear seal surface where the rear main seal is, that part of the uh, crankshaft is hardened, heat treated, so that it'll be more durable against the seal. 
It's uh, Hardinger Rockwell 42, if anybody knows what that is. Or, is that hard? <laughs> I think it is. So, let's see. Um, let me, the connecting rods. Here we go. So these are all forged steel. And the um, interface surface at the top of the rod is identical to the original Model A uh, connecting rod. This is a one inch diameter inside the bushing. Of course, the rest of the rod is completely different. Um, Terry did a, an, an analysis on the strength of the rod and um, it far exceeds anything that could ever be achieved on this type of an engine. So nothing to worry about here. Anyway, it takes the standard GM uh, bearings. And let's see, he says it was analyzed for applying uh, something analysis to peak, for peak loading at 5,000 RPM. Uh, anyway, regardless, they come in a balanced, they come uh, in a set of four, obviously, but they're all balanced within three grams of each other. Um, so, but that's on a set. You can't mix rods between different sets because they're all gonna weigh a little differently. And that's part of the manufacturing process. When they forge these out, they machine them and then they sort them by weight. And then they may, when they get rods in a batch that are very close in weight, then they'll, um, they'll mill something off the rod to bring it in closer, in our spec, is to within three grams each. <coughs> And of course, the stroke is the same. Stroke is the same. Yeah. Uh, stroke, bore, uh, all the specs from the original engine are the same, really, except the journal diameters. <clears throat> so, are the cylinder walls any thicker? Like yeah. rebuilds or for boring out, yeah. that type of thing? Yeah, they, they are. Uh, if you would ever need to do that, they are. They're, they're thicker. The block, the, uh, the casting walls have been thickened, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in areas where they had been known to crack. Um, and that, I guess, more relates to the top of the block. And um, I do know the cylinder walls are thicker than the originals. Uh, and that also goes for the head, too. One thing that uh, Terry did was he designed uh, the water passage uh, uh, portals on the top of the head and on the top of the block and on the head to be a little bigger in the rear, a little tighter in the front, and it improves the water circulation to the back of the engine a little better. Um, and it, that was noticeable. Some guys, uh, I was out at Kerrville in Texas and it was quite, it was hot. And a couple of guys drove out from California and they drove through the desert and um, no temperature issues. So, uh, but I think, you know, when you consider some of these old engines, the reason they do get hot, the ones that do, we've cut apart so many blocks, so many heads, and there's so much rust and scaling. Uh, in the old ones, and that, anywhere you see that, that's gonna prohibit cooling. So, probably when they were new, they were fine, but over the years, uh, unless you can get that scaling out, they're, if they're prone to heating up, they're probably gonna remain that way. So the new camshaft is right here. Um, and this is uh, five journals on it. Uh, we have added oil passages to the front. This is an oil passage, and it lubricates the front, as I understand it, uh, and um, it, is, it is the 17th lubrication point on the block. The, um, these are all heat treated. Uh, we did check the rock wall hardness of this. I can't tell you what the number is, but it's high, okay? But you can tell by looking at this uh, that you can see the heat marks on this and there's a reason that they don't take the heat marks, the heat um, straight across. They want to have some flexibility in the camshaft in the iron uh, 
between lobes. And it just, it helps avoid brittleness. But I don't think there's anything to worry about. Come up and take a look. Um, but it's a, um, it's considered to be um, a touring camp. Uh, I think it can do a Model B camp, something like that. Are the parents in lots for the games are running? Yes, they're there. And let's see, so. So is your kit providing pistons as well? No, this is, the kit consists of the connecting rod, the crank, and the block. Uh, the camshaft is extra, an extra component, the light and flywheel is an extra component. And, um, and the head. And the head. The head Everything but the pistons. <laughs> What's that? Well, he's he's stock stock yeah, he's a stock. Everything is stock. All the parts are stock. So use whatever piston you like. And again, if you read the builder's guide, you'll we ran it with eggy pistons and a thinner Hastings ring. Terry <coughs> seems to like that one and um, performed really well. Uh, but a lot of guys are running Snyder pistons and uh, Silverlit, and um, so I think it's up to whatever you like. But the <coughs> If the piston is on spec, it'll work with the block. If the block is on spec to the original Ford design, yeah, so shouldn't be a problem. Um, anyway, just to sort of wrap up, we did make a head. Uh, it's going back because it's got some cosmetic defects in the casting, but we tested it. Um, in fact, it was driven to Kerrville, Texas, and ran cool through the desert. Uh, it's got the uh, different porting you know, the different the water uh, passages. That's the bottom of it, the heart-shaped uh, combustion chambers. And this is a six and a half to one compression head, okay? Do you have any trouble tying with that six to uh, that compression? Uh, I have asked the question, and uh, you mean timing or? Timing, setting the timing with six to one. I'm not aware of any issue regarding. I think the V engine has got a different uh, cover on it. Yeah. And it, Set that higher than you Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of that, but uh, I would, you know, direct the question to Terry. And if you don't have his email address, happy to give it to you. Is it in there? Okay, good. Uh, but you know, my guess, I haven't heard anything about that, so my guess is that it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I listened in on as many conversations as I can. I was impressed with it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. The, the Snyder head is 5.4. I'm not sure. I think, is it 6 or 5.5? The stock head is 5 something. It's 5 something. Yeah, 5 something. Yeah, could be. Who's that skull of the dog? What? The skull of the dog. How much one you got? <laughs> the Rocket 429. <laughs> that's from the skull of the dog. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, old. that's Charlie, yeah? Yeah. 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 I think that's a seven. Yeah, could be. Sure. Yeah, it could be. I think it's higher. He's a six and a half or seven. I just care because it's such a cool look at head. <laughs> <laughs> it can actually run worse, but I still like it. Yeah, well, there, you know, it's all about personal taste, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, the heads won't be available till October. You know, but uh, anyway, they're they're in the pipeline, and we have the light and flywheel. Um, it's thirty pounds. That's it, and it's set up for a, a V8 clutch pressure plate. Did you have a light and flywheel down in the V8 clutch? Yeah, that's pretty good. I have a light and flywheel down with the V8 clutch. Yeah, it'll work on that crankshaft. Yeah. Sure. You don't need to get a new flywheel if you don't want. Yeah. So what would the whole system cost? Well, if you, it's on the back of your your flyer there. Uh, the block kit is uh, $4,000. The head is 400 and the cam is 400 and the flywheel, I think it's three, yeah, 375. Uh, anyway, it, this is an event and we offer event discounts. Uh, the block kit would be, um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit lower, it's 38.50. And uh, the other parts are a little bit less. And what's the trigger cuts? Yeah. Uh, to this area, it's about two hundred dollars. They ship out of Kentucky. And if you guys are, you know, at some point, if a few of you decide to get one, 
I recommend you ship together. It really saves a lot on freight. Um, it, uh, one block might be 240, two blocks would be 280, and three blocks would be 320, something like that. So um, the one block kit is kind of at the minimum freight rate. So if you, uh, if you guys are interested, talk amongst yourselves and put the order together. That would be the best way to save a little bit. Okay. So I, you know, any more Q and A? I, I'll answer what I can. What's the current price? The current price? It's on the back there. It's uh, four thousand for the block kit. How many have you sold? We have sold uh, about worldwide about 550. And that's, uh, I think we ship, this includes Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. Uh, Europe, 30, Australia, New Zealand, maybe 50, 60, um, no, maybe 100 altogether to Australia, New Zealand, uh, the rest to the US. Uh, customers. So I think in the U.S. we, I think it's around 400, 420, something like and that. How many are you pro have produced and plan to produce going forward? Well, we're in production now, and we're we're going to have build some inventory at the warehouse. We will produce. My, we had such a difficult time. Uh, I. I'm responsible for production and before COVID, I, I go to China every two months. Uh, and it's um, two to three months, at least five or six times a year. I do, this is one thing that I do, I do other things there too, but I haven't been able to go since November of 2019. And fortunately, all my factories are pretty good and um, we've been able to work long distance, uh, but they've all been slow. And one thing, when you can go there and sit down with the factory, you can get a little bit of, uh, you know, get them to move a little bit. And, uh, but they have their own problems because of what's going on, you know, with the lockdowns. Um, but everything has been slow. The shipping has been slow. We were bringing them into Los Angeles. The first container sat outside the port for a month before we could even bring it to the port. So uh, that's why we started bringing them into Savannah and up to Kentucky. But everything is slow, everything is more, much more expensive, uh, but the, the manufacturing is consistent and that's important. So we expect by the end of August to have inventory on the shelf and I will plan to maintain probably a year's worth of inventory because I worry about our inability to get fast production. Out of China. So, so how many units would that be? Uh, well, we sold in the U.S. We sold 400 or so in the last 12 or 14 months. So, about that. We'll have available. If we see that going down to, if it hits below 200, we'll immediately put in an order for production. And just so you know, um, the factory that we work with is actually quite large. Uh, they're the fourth largest engine block manufacturer in China. Probably that is Asia. Uh, because Asia is the only country that is really manufacturing blocks outside of India uh, in any volume. India is kind of doing it more for its domestic. They do some exports with uh, Mahindra, but uh, most of India's production stays in India. Uh, our factory does a lot of domestic production in China for some of their truck lines, but they also manufacture for Perkins. Um, they manufacture for, they did, uh, they did the uh, GM block. Uh, they do Toyota, Isuzu, uh, a lot of names you would recognize. Um, and they have a capacity of about 10,000 uh, pieces a month. So we're actually, I had, when I did my um, Willie's Jeep engine project, I worked with a very small factory, which didn't have the QA standards that the larger factories have. And the blocks were fine, but 
Uh, we did. We had a few with porosity issues. Um, fortunately, we're working with a factory that knows how to do large scale, high quality production, and um, they haven't let us down. So it's it's all been good. Uh, and we're actually quite fortunate they would take our business because our volume is really not big, and it was hard to get them to do it. And when they finally agreed, I was really happy because I knew it would be pure headaches for me. So, uh, but anyway, they're they're good, and we'll stick with them for sure. Um, I'm wondering what uh, Charlie Yap thinks about your block and his head together. Is he confused I, about that? Give him a call. I bet you he'd love it. You know, I mean, we sent him a, we sent him a block. I imagine he's putting one of his heads on it. Yeah. yeah. But um, well, this is a reprint from his uh, publication, so uh, that's I right. Can be yeah. that, that's that's right. Charlie actually gave us um, really helped us in the beginning uh, and helped us with that article in the first that edition, the Secrets of Speed, and that's the reprint of the article more or less. Um, but he's a uh, he's a big fan of the uh, of the blog, and you know when you think about well how, how tough the bottom end is on this. I can't imagine you could put a head on it that could stress it. Right. You know. So, just my opinion. <laughs> you can put all that force down on a model A, and the first thing you know, you're going to turn an axle on it. <laughs> but then you got to fix the axle. <laughs> do, do you get more horsepower out of this than 40? Okay. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, the standard answer is no. But it's because if you're using stock parts, you should get stock horsepower. Okay, but I think, and other people, I think, agree, that because the aspiration is a little better, you might get a little more, but we've never done a dyno test to give you, provide a definitive answer. Does your uh, PowerPoint have a slide on uh, the oil distribution? Yes, it does. Yeah, several okay. diagrams of that. Yeah, in the PowerPoint. Good. So happy to get that to you. Yeah, I'll see that. Yeah, that question. Sure. So the most they recommend for a compression ratio on the Model A is like seven or so, seven to one. And I don't know what the reason is, whether it's because of the gravity, but with a modern bottom end like yours. I don't think it did. Yeah, I think your only problem is if you can get a starter to turn it over. <laughs> yeah, but a modern starter, I mean, I have one of mine. But, I mean, is there any reason why you couldn't use like a nine to one compression? I don't, like I say, if you can turn it over, I, that, you know, the, I, you think of, think of the bottom end of this block as basically something out of the 70s, the yeah. 60s or the 70s. It's sort of that type of durability. And you know, in those blocks, you could run eight, 10, 11, 12 to one compression. You know, so uh, it's a good question. I can't give you an answer, but I, you know, I think it would be hard to achieve a compression that would affect the, um, the rolling assembly. I'll send Charlie Yap an email. I ask him. He'll know. He'll know. <laughs> He'll say you can only do it with his head. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.